lots of hatred, lots of secrets, lots of romance, the devil or not, the hell or not. I got nightmares in my head, I fear, that the thoughts build up until I can't hear. That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety filling up every space The sound of clicking indicates the door open I looked over and my eyes almost popped out of my sockets And a chill ran down my spine There was him, nothing but a towel wrapped around his torso But he, with another towel in the other hand Drying his hair Dear God, can you please not register my great sins because my brain wants to look away but my body decided to betray me and then there this this great god caught me off guard absolutely off guard and marching towards me oh my god he kneeled on the bed and hovered over me when i aim you little angel i nodded and then immediately shook my hair the fresh cold and hitting my nose and the closeness is making my starving stomach go crazy. He was staring at me. The whole moment was so romantic and then... And then my stomach growled. The corner of his mouth lifted more. All the blood flushed to my cheeks. Looks like my kitten is actually hungry, he said. He got up the bed and stood straight. Get fresh, I'll tell them to get breakfast for you. He spoke sweetly. I got up from the bed. I was walking, fiddling my fingers. He saw that. Wanna say something, Monange? He asked. I bit my lip. I want brownies. He pulled me, making me land on his chest. He cut my cheek, rubbing my lower lip with his thumb and spoke. Anything else? He asked. I shook my head. The situation was too hot. I couldn't dare to meet his eyes. My heart was thumping in my ribcage and I'm pretty sure he can feel it as well. You know how much I'm controlling not to kiss you right now? He spoke. I looked him in the eyes and the edge line working my eyes shifted to his plumpy lips. I gulped hard and again looked him in the eyes. One yes and you will get what you want. I darted my tongue out and bit my lips. I was staring at him without saying anything. He smacked and released me from his hold. He went to the closet and I was standing there at my place, longing and missing his touch already. Taking a deep breath, I went to the bathroom to freshen up. When I came out the bathroom, breakfast was on the bed with the brownies that I asked for. Come your brownies are here. He spoke and I came to bed running like a child. I squealed in happiness. I immediately grabbed the brownies and took a bite. A morning escaped out of ecstasy. So good, I spoke while chewing my brownie. I can make you scream much louder out of ecstasy. He spoke and I choked on my brownie. He gave me juice i drank it and glared at him he started laughing and god knows his laughter is now my favorite sound to hear look at you he spoke in between laughing jungkook i hit his arm and whined okay okay he spoke i pouted and kept on eating my brownie while of course glaring at him because he's just a tease sitting in his office i'm fiddling my fingers i'm nervous because jungkook told me he's eyeing on luca wants some information regarding mr dixon I don't want to remember him, he's a jerk. The stress is taking over, sitting on the couch in this ginormous office, tapping my foot continuously while fiddling with my fingers and almost freaking out. Jungkook came and sat next to me. He put his hand on my knee. I looked at him. You are freaking out, but you just need to let go. I nodded and the door opened. Two of the men entered. As Klein and tall. One is Luca, but the other has a mask on, and in all black with a cap on head. A gothic goat reaching his knees, hiding his appearance, rings in his fingers, black jeans, and black combat shoes. Both settle on the sofa either side. Luca brought out his homework. He spoke, How are you, wine? I'm fine. How are you? I asked. Great. The other man was sitting across from me. He took his mask off and I gasped, my eyes wide, my lo jaw low. I looked at Jungkook, all surprised and shocked. He chuckled. He's my hang. He spoke. Hang? But, but that's Mr. Kim. I spoke, confused. That's right, Ryan. I'm Mr. Kim. And also his hang. Mr. Kim spoke. I don't quite... I was interrupted by Jungkook. He's Nam Jun Hang. We grew up together. Don't worry, Wyan, there are still five more members you still need to be introduced to. Nam Jun Hang spoke. You never told me. I spoke, turning to Jungkook, and he just shrugged. 
Well, get to the point. Jungkook spoke. They asked me different questions and everything that happened. I told them everything but seemed like it was not quite useful to them though. Nam Jun Hang sighed and spoke. We have no lead except the CCTV footage and it is also useless. When anything in particular you remember? I shook my head and he sighed again. So what are we going to do now? Luke has spoke. Hunt him down in my bruising grip as soon as possible. Jungkook snored, probably pissed. Nam Jun Hang put his tab down on the table. I glanced at it and took his tab. There was a picture of someone and in the background someone's arm was showing up which had something on it. This I pointed at a particular mark. Can you get it clear? I spoke earning all of the guys' attention. Nam Jun Hang looked at it and frowned. He immediately pulled out the logo. This, this logo was tattooed on his chest here. I spoke pointing my finger near my collarbone. All of the men in the room fell silent. I felt a little bit uncomfortable. Is that useful or just useless? I asked, not able to read the man's faces. Seems like we have a lead, Nam Jin Hang spoke. No Hang, the string has been loosened. Jungkook spoke, grinding his teeth. And God, this Greek god looked absolutely magnificent with his angry looks. Ihodela is a dead man now, Jungkook growled. Okay, so now we have a lead. If you say so, I will dig in more into that. Lucas spoke with no expression, straight as hell. Jungkook nodded. Okay, Migu, it's time for the CEO to shine. Nam Jun Hang spoke, standing up. He turned his heel to leave, but halted on Jungkook's call and turned around. Gracias, Jungkook spoke in Spanish, and I don't know a bit of it. Anything for you, Amigo. Nam Jun Hang spoke, so I interpreted it as a thank you. Nam Jun Hang left, and Jungkook sat there on the couch, right leg over left knee, arm on the side, sinking deep in his thought, with a slight furrow, making him emit waves of haughtiness. I was sitting next to him, pretending to use my phone, but actually trying to distract myself from this walking crazy hot stuff. The door opened, and a woman wearing a very short skirt with a shirt showcasing her fake cleavage entered. Lips made up like a duck, surely not the natural ones, hips round and full. A hundred percent fake, Botox and surgeries, a walking plastic approached, eyeing me. Sir, you have a meeting in 15 minutes. He spoke in a fakest tone that made me gag and threw up right there, but I held it, keeping a straight face. Jungkook calmed. He had his meeting and we were off to home now. What an irony. The house I thought would be hell is now my home. I'm calling that my home. I was in the car next to him. Luca was driving though and Jungkook was on his phone. I looked at my hands which had the imprints of hands. I caressed my wrist and took a deep breath. Jungkook didn't really talk much. He was busy figuring out the enemy. We were home. I went to the closet to grab something comfy to change into. I took my dress off. It was a total neck dress. I was standing in front of the mirror, staring at myself. The marks aside from this morning were haunting me. I wanted to kill that so-called boss. My lips swelled. My cheek had a handprint which was covered by makeup. How could I even allow someone to do that to me? My eyes stung. My vision became blurry. My hands a fist. Breathing spaced up. I was in my furry when suddenly I was dragged to the side wall. By my neck, I opened my eyes. And it was Jungkook. His eyes... Filled with fire and anger, he was looking at me, really angry and furious. What did we talk about these truths this morning? He spoke, grating his teeth, choking me slightly. I didn't say anything. Speak of mine, he snarled. Will you train me? I spoke, holding his choking head in my soft ones. What? he asked, frowning. Will you teach me self-defense and train me? I spoke with fire and rage in my eyes. The corner of, of his mouth lifted as he tightened his hold on my neck and spoke. It would be hard, Munanj. I want it and you give that to me. I spoke, looking straight in his eyes. He tilted his head, cut strewing and kissed me. Our lips met by sending electricity to my body. My eyes closed. 
He didn't lose his grip, but stepped closer, pressing me to the wall and devouring me like a devil he is. He demanded the entrance of his tank, and I gave him the access by opening my mouth. Our tongues collide. His grip is losing on my throat, but he never leaving my neck. Though in a snap he can snap my neck, but he never hurts me. He broke the kiss. We both were breathing heavily. He connected our foreheads and spoke. To saras me morte, Monange. He spoke in Spanish, or what? I don't even know. I looked at him. Will you? Because I only know English, I asked. Anything for you, Monange. He spoke with a grin on his face. I smiled at him, and he joined his lips with mine. Again, he was pouring his possessiveness and love in it. I felt my knees jelly. I wrapped my hands around his neck and kissed him back. I broke the kiss, putting my hands on his chest. I looked at him again. He was turned on and looked freaking hot as hell. Will you remove these marks from my body and replace them with yours? Will you wear the ring of my first? I asked and he growled loudly, which vibrated to his chest. He looked at me so fiercely and again slammed his lips on mine. Instagram link in the description. Things are a bit spicy there. Devil divorced his menage. Angel became devils. What chaos will this duo bring? Both devour each other, but the sinister is there. To be continued. Till then, bye.